AI tools are powerful aids for forensic analysis, but tech-savvy criminals are also finding ways to capitalize. Here with us today to share more, we have Michael Rogers, keynote speaker here at AAFS and author of the email from the future, Notes from 2084. Thank you for your time today. Certainly, my pleasure. We're very excited to dive into your book and for attendees that are here at the conference, it's available for purchase, correct? Yes. All right, great. Well, let's talk about how these cyber criminals are using AI to try and make these cyber crimes that they commit more efficient and also effective? Well, I think the first big impact of AI um, is in phishing emails. Okay. Phishing emails are hard to write because you have to, in order to fool someone into clicking on a link, you have to produce an email that has a lot of information about you know, where they are in the corporation, who their friends are, et cetera, et cetera. And in the old days, that is to say two months ago, phishing, <laughs> <laughs> phishing gangs used to have to do research for days and days before they could craft an email that would target someone in the organization and cause them to click on a link. Now there is AI support for phishing emails that actually Harvard Business School says it improves their efficiency by 50%. Wow. And IBM did a study in which crafting a phishing email took their researchers 10 hours, which is about the right amount, uh, and the AI did it in five minutes. So that's the first place that we're really seeing AI in a broad and profitable way. Of course, people are also working on fake voices, mm -hmm. fake videos. Those are, are still being sort of worked out by the black hat hackers. So now on the flip side of things, AI can be used for good, and there are some aspects of AI that can contribute to the crime-fighting aspect of forensic scientists, correct? Oh, absolutely. Uh, one of the areas is in pattern recognition, things like fingerprints or crime scenes. It can add that extra level of analysis. In the case of fingerprints, it can go through big, big databases really, really quickly. And we've already seen examples of AI being used to uh, recover writings on ancient Roman scrolls that were unreadable until now. Wow. So there's a lot of potential there. What are digital IDs? Digital IDs are, I think, one of the solutions to crime on the internet uh, in the sense that right now we don't have firm identities like a driver's license or a passport. It's very powerful and it's very useful for citizens if they trust their government. The worst example of digital ID abuse is in China, where it's being used for social credit. That is to right. say, you know, you, opportunities in the world are dependent on what the surveillance technology says about you. So there's a fine line there. In this country, I think, it may take a while because of our you know, concerns about tyranny. Right. It may well become something that's optional okay. in the sense that a driver's license is optional. Right. But if you want to get on an airplane, it's nice to have a driver's license. Same thing. So in a utopia where we do trust our government um, and, and everybody has these digital IDs, how would those be useful or beneficial in combating crime? Hopefully they would prevent criminals from forging IDs. Uh, so it's going to be, it's much more difficult for someone to replicate your digital ID. Yes. In yeah. fact, Estonia was really the first country to use it. They have been hacked constantly by Russia because they left the Soviet Union. Uh, the Russians are great hackers, but they have never broken into the uh, digital ID treasury in the capital. Okay. In what context do you see these digital IDs being implemented? Are we talking about utilizing digital IDs just to protect very sensitive information, or do you see those becoming more widespread for maybe everyday interactions? I think they'll be part of everyday life. I mean, one example, again, from Estonia, which is probably furthest along, is your health records are attached to your digital ID. So you go, anyone in Estonia goes to any doctor and gives them the digital ID and immediately their entire health record, down to whether they want to be buried or cremated, comes through. So it's that sort of thing. If you have a trusted system, same thing in financial situations. It will also help us, I think, in social networks. Because if social networks require people to truly identify themselves, oh. that will really change behavior. No kidding. Maybe we desperately need those. I think so. Um, you mentioned you know, some of the countries where this is already in play. Bringing it to the United States, 
if you had to guesstimate on a timeline, what would you say? Uh, I think that we will have optional digital IDs within a couple of years okay. because all of the major companies like Microsoft and Google are working on, it, it needs to be a, a national standard uh, and working on creating that standard. And in this country, I think it will be a, uh, you know, not a push, but a pull. Okay. We'll say life is so much better with your yeah. digital ID. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, it's a fascinating topic. We really appreciate your insight and your expertise. And thank you again for your time and congratulations on the book. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. All of our content from the 2025 AAFS annual meeting is live on our playlist now. Click the link here to watch it all. We can't wait to see you again next year.